When I follow the humility of Christ, the world will persecute me and will ridicule me and will put me down. I'm a nothing in the eyes of the world. But who cares? As long as you are seen in the eyes of Christ, that's what matters. That's what matters, my beloved. Don't ever work hard to please people. Work hard to please God. My beloved daughters and sons, especially the young ones, and it's to all of you. Don't ever try very hard to impress your friends. You don't need to look beautiful in their eyes. Who says? That's a false statement. You need to be beautiful in the eyes of your Lord Jesus, not in the eyes of your friends and in the eyes of the world. You are beautiful as you are because this is the way God intended for you to be. He chose for you to be, to be born in this way. You don't need to change nothing. But one thing you need to do is give him your heart so that God can change your heart. He wants your heart, not your facial look. So what I look like Mariah Carey. <laughs> but my heart is not for Christ. What does it benefit a person to win the whole world? And at the end, we lose ourselves. It's meaningless. I know your works only. You're only working. But no more you are in, in tribulations. No more you are in poverty. You've become very rich without your Jesus. You got the president to give you money. Khabibi. Hmm? The prime minister and the premier gave us millions of dollars. Of course, we're going to open our churches to be hubs for vaccination. Of course. The church will only be open for, to, for one thing only, to worship the Lord Jesus, nothing else. And the whole world can go wherever they want to go. I don't need you. I want my Lord. But I'll always pray for you, for the Lord to have mercy on you and touch your heart the way he did with me and with so many millions and billions of people. We pray for everyone, but when it comes to the Lord, there is no compromising. There is no compromising. There is no compromising. I know your works and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. Who can tell me where Satan's throne is? The earth, absolutely. Satan's throne is this world, the earth. That is his throne. He is saying to his beloved church, you have placed your throne where Satan's throne is. You've become worldly. You began to build massive churches, you know, going all the way to the sky, big massive churches. You've spent hundreds of millions and billions of dollars on buildings, yet you did not spend the time to save a soul. I did not die on the cross for you to build me churches worth, worth billions of dollars. I died on the cross for you to build me people for my kingdom, not bricks and mortar. So many churches in Europe are now empty. They've turned into a museum and something else. Once upon a time, it was filled with Christians. Today, it is empty. No one is there. Why? Because the church placed her throne where Satan's throne is. The church became rich worldly, materialistically. That's what destroyed and weakened the church. The church seeked materialism more than spirituality. This is a problem. It's a problem. And you hold fast to my name and did not deny my faith even in the days in which Antipas was fa my faithful martyr who was killed among you where Satan dwells. But even though you're going through trouble, even though you've joined the world and the governments of the world, but you're still holding my faith. I, there is still that the element of Christ there. It's still there. Why? 
because I will not give my glory to no one else. I'll make sure my church will always have Christ in her no matter how far and distant the church goes away from me. But I, Jesus, will always remind my church that, hello, you need Jesus. Where are you going? The prime minister, the president, and the king of the world will do you no good. If you deny Jesus for the sake of gaining favoritism from worldly people, that's where you are making the biggest mistake of your life. Don't ever swap your Jesus with no one. Christ cannot be replaced. We cannot afford to replace the Lord. We cannot afford it. We cannot. And you did not deny my faith even in the days of which, in which Antipas was my faithful martyr. The word Antipas is not referring to a person's name. The word Antipas, it's a Greek, means against all. It is the one who is against all. He's not referring here to a, a specific person, but it is uh, talking about someone who is against all. Whoever that Christian is that comes and be against all, meaning against the whole world, that is an antipas. At the time of Pergamos, who was the antipas of that third century? Saint Athanasius. Saint Athanasius fought against all the heresies that came at that time. And some people came and warning him, saying, why are you troubling yourself too much? Don't fight people this hard. People will hate you. The world will go against you. He said, if the whole world goes against me, I, through the grace of Christ, will go against the whole world. Now, he is an antipas. He is against all that are against Jesus. And blessed is the soul that stands firm against every heresy, against every current that is against the Lord and His will. Blessed are you. And this Antipas was my faithful martyr who was killed among you where Satan dwells. The moment you begin to speak the truth, <laughs> they will come after you. <laughs> the moment you stand firm in your faith, the whole world will hate you. Why? The world hates you because there is someone behind the world that is pushing the world to hate you, and that is Satan. Every time you bring Jesus to the world, Satan hates you, and he'll bring people to go against you. 